Yoshiro Ikeda is very special. Yoshiro Ikeda has been teaching at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas for many years. He has just retired from that college. And he has been one of the more influential artists in Kansas for probably this whole century. He's best known for vessel forms, but not what you traditionally think of as a vase or a cup. What he'll do is combine vessels with sculptural elements. So sometimes narrow necks, sometimes piercing the vessel, sometimes having different shapes within the vessel's form. And then he is a master glazer. This piece is called Santa Fe. The colors are very warm, desert-like, and have these streaks of what I think are probably the kinds of colors that one would see in an environment that had much brighter light than the Midwest might do. These greens and blues and peaches, I would associate with adobe. And then the forms are really simple the way one might see in southwestern architecture. This is one of Akita's more traditional vessel forms, but as you can see, he's taking that and turning what might be a traditional vessel form into something very expressive. The shape is very angular. It may have been originally wheel thrown, but then it looks like it's also been manipulated by hand. What Ikeda is really well known for are his glazes. This vessel might have been through a kiln and been fired maybe five or six times. The black layer of glaze would be put on and fired and then a white layer of glaze put on, maybe allowed to dry, or maybe while it's still wet, Ikeda may have taken a fork or a knife and made these striations in the glaze. This white glaze shrinks when it's fired. So what happens is as the glaze gets hotter and hotter, it starts pulling into these beads. And that's where you see these really fascinating textures. This is a piece called teapot. And this was one of several pieces that the library purchased through the Topeka competition, which is an annual and then later a biannual competition. Yoshida Ikeda has been participating in that competition almost since the beginning. So over the years, he has won several of the awards that the Friends of the Library sponsors, and this piece is one of them. Now, it's kind of a new interpretation of a teapot. Obviously, it could not be functional because it's very heavy. It would not be feasible to pour tea out of it. But it follows all of the rules that a teapot, a teapot would need. It's got the spout, the lid. The lid is kind of interesting. There's a hole for your finger, and then the lid lifts straight up. And inside, it would hold a gallon or more of liquid. Some of these incisions that he's made on the side of the vessel kind of articulate the form but then they also let you know that this was not a real thrown piece. This is not a piece that's about craftsmanship and about making something look like a machine made it. Yoshiro really wanted his own artist's hands to be visible when you looked at this piece. These ridges here around the outside. And then he does another interesting things with the bottoms of his pieces. There'll be a series of little feet. That will divide the weight across the whole bottom of the piece, but it also gives the piece something very organic, something that really looks like it should have just grown rather than been formed by human hands. This piece is another sculpture that we bought from the Topeka competition a few years ago. One of our volunteers got to meet Yoshiro Ikeda and talk to him about this piece at that opening reception. And Yoshi was really mellow and just said, you know, there's no heavy symbolism in it. It doesn't really mean anything specific. Whatever you want, however you want to interpret it, that's fine with me. He said, well, there's got to be some inspiration, something that you're looking at. And Yoshiro finally opened up a little bit and said, I love the Flint Hills. I love Chinese landscape painting. I love the way forms will emerge out of very pale washes of ink in a Chinese landscape painting. I love the shapes of the mountains. And when you look at a form like this, the rolling aspect here might be reminiscent of the Flint Hills or mountains that you would see in Chinese landscape paintings. This piece is remarkably light. It's just called vase or bottle. I can lift it. It's thick-walled and really low-fire clay, so it's fragile. 
he said this was probably one of the more difficult pieces he's ever done, and he would never do another one. So I think Larry, being a ceramic artist himself, when he was director of the gallery, Larry Peters would recognize something that an artist might be stretching their boundaries a little bit, would be experimenting more. For him as both a ceramist and a collector, I think that was what made it fun for him. One thing I think we can learn from Yoshiro Ikeda is the properties of clay and how expressive they can be. When Yoshi goes into a studio, he says, you never know what you will create. It's exciting. The moment you touch the clay, you forget about everything. And I think when you look at what he's doing in terms of form and in terms of what have to be random aspects of glaze, you see an artist experimenting. And I think that's one of the fun things about his work. Yoshiro Ikeda is special to our community in many ways. He has had a remarkable influence on his students at K-State. And I think really, as many places as I go around the Midwest where I see examples of Yoshiro Ikeda's work, that makes me really proud. It makes me proud of him as someone who came to Kansas to teach here and really built a career here.